So, hello, welcome. Um, no, I don't know everybody. Um, so I guess you also don't know me. Um, not all of you. Some of you know me, right? And some of, I know some of you. So my name is Holger Karl. Um, I'm doing this um, computer network seminar this uh, semester together with you. Um, it actually turns out that this is a pure seminar this semester. So forget about the pro seminar. You, you, you're familiar with the terminology there? Seminar is for master programs, pro seminar is for bachelor programs, right? Um, and pro seminars are a bit simpler and we help more than in a master because you get your wise and experience, right? So you need less help. Um, uh, but sometimes you also run them in parallel together. So it, just ignore, when, whenever pro seminar appears, just ignore it, right? Um, so this is clearly a, a, a seminar. Um, what do you expect to happen in a seminar? Did you already have one here? I mean, some of you had a pro seminar, right? Yes. Yes. So, so same thing, right? Uh, yeah, same thing, more or less. I, I, I guess not, but no? my pro seminar wasn't like, I would expect the seminar to be, I, I would expect that we get a, a, some topic and then we work on that and present it. Yeah, that's kind a good characterization. And your pro seminar was nothing like that? Mm. It was like uh, on algorithms, and every week we got an algorithm for some problem, and then we could work out how to solve this, That's and then present the solution for that. I remember that discussion with Yes, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, <laughs> nothing like that. So uh, that okay. was a good characterization, right? You get a topic, um, and you do a couple things. You read up on that topic. You familiarize yourself with it, you prepare a presentation, and you prepare a write-up, right? Um, basically, this is about three key skills, reading, writing, and speaking. And this is really what it's all about, about these skills. It has not so much to do with a concrete topic. We could do seminars on, I don't know, Egyptian pyramids. Um, <laughs> I don't know much about the Egyptian pyramid, so, so we pick something for networking, right? But really the topic doesn't matter that much. So even if, if it should happen that you are not totally happy with the topic that you now got, which by my never ending surprise, I never thought I would ever see that in my lifetime, it actually worked out that, that there was no con that we found that there was a solution without any conflict, which is I've never seen that before and I probably never will. No. <laughs> So that, that's great, right? Um, I, but even if you're not totally happy with the topic, it doesn't matter so much. Um, again, you stick to whatever, and this is much more about this, it's sometimes called seminaristic skills, um, reading, writing, speaking. So ignore the topic, don't ignore the topic. That, that, that's, not, that's not the key part, right? So um, if you expect that, you're already, already pretty much on the right track. And one other word to emphasize for a seminar, in even more so than for a pro-seminar, for a seminar is independence. It's your job, right? We help, yes, but at the end of the day, this is about you independently, on your own, getting into the thick of the topic. Why do we have this? Okay, I don't know what's happening, anyway. Um, Um, independently doing that. We help, but at the end, it's your job. So approach, pick a topic. There were some pointers, one, two, maybe three papers already as starting points for a particular topic. Um, clearly, that's not going to be enough. Clearly, part of that is, part of the work in a seminar is literature. Right? How do you actually find other material that is relevant to that particular topic? So, Typically, what will happen during that search, you'll end up with 20, 30, 50 papers that are relevant, or could be relevant, or seem to be relevant. And again, then clearly nobody expects you to, write, to read 50 papers and write a synopsis about 50 papers. So then the, there's, a, there's a thinking phase, there's a weeding out, there's a filtering phase going on. We'll, we'll help with that as well. Um, but again, this is a lot of input, this depends a lot on your initiative. Then summarizing, comparing, 
contrasting, juxtaposing uh, all the material from, from this paper, presentation, discussion about the presentation. Right? What we will typically do, um, we'll run this as a so-called block seminar. It effectively means we pick, well, 18 people in the seminar, we probably need 45 minutes per, per person. Uh, that's, uh, oh, so then divide by four is four, five, 16 hours. So we probably need, we probably need to have to run that. Um, so we'll pick two days. I don't really care when. Uh, probably towards the end of the semester, early, early break time, we'll, we'll discuss that soon. Um, then we run that, we do these talks, and should we give the talk, we talk about the talks, um, and so on. So all of you are on the same schedule, all of you have the same time to prepare, and so on. So that we should prepare in order to, rather than this week, we wish we would have ever done that. So, yeah, uh, that, that's the big picture. Um, any questions up to here? Please, by all means, interrupt me, ask. Have you ever had something similar? Sound familiar? You have had similar things in your bachelor. You have done other seminars here. Okay. Okay. So it's a new thing. That's good. I mean, that's why you're at the university, right? To, to learn new stuff. Okay. Um, formalities. A seminar is a course, right? So Paul is relevant, right? Uh, you know about Paul. Um, for a seminar, you need to register by April 19th. And deregister potentially, um, right? Uh, deregister also. That's the seminar. You also need to register for the exam. And I know it's silly, but basically this is this boils down to German law that you have that these are two different steps that you have to separately register for the exam. Um, so there's the April fifteenth to April to May fifteenth period, and May fifteenth is also the time for deregistering. If you do not deregister and don't submit anything here, you fail. You have a failed attempt on your records, right? So if you decide, no, this is terrible, make sure you deregister before May 15th, nothing happens. All good. If you miss the deadline by one minute, terrible, right? E e easy rule, actually. Um, also, registering in another seminar will not work. If you want quickly now to decide that, oh no, this is terrible networking, I do something else, May 15th, uh, May 19th. After that, no dice. Okay? And it's really, it's, uh, okay, uh, remember, everything in power you do is two clicks. It's the, the, the register and the submit clicks. It always happens that, yeah, but I registered. Did you submit? Uh, two clicks. Okay, topics, not updated in any case, but this is already solved, so this is great, so we don't need to go through that. So let me say a couple more words towards the organization, how we, how we run that. We do this as a little mini conference. So basically, how, how does science work? It's a broad question, I know. Um, what do scientists get as little perks? Why do people work apart from their salary? Well, apart, an important thing are conferences, right? People like to go to conferences in interesting places where they discuss with their colleagues about any progress they've made. But how does this work? How are you allowed to go to a conference? Well, you have to talk to your boss to pay for it. Um, and, or you pay for your own, which is not a good idea. Um, how, how, how does the selection process happen? Well, it's basically uh, a couple guys gang up together and say, hey, let's run a conference on, I don't know, topic X. Advertise that, mailing this, etc., etc. People say, oh, look, this is a nice topic. Oh, and it's in Paris or in Hawaii or I don't know, uh, some, some nice place. So oh, let's, let's send a paper there. Let's send a paper there with the stuff we worked on. And then typically you have many more papers being submitted to such a conference when there's actually space for presentation. Right? So there's a selection process. A review process where basically people read each other's papers and give them grades. Terrible, excellent, whatever, right? And then 
we figure out we need so many papers to uh, to cover all our costs and to make a profit. <coughs> Excuse me, this is not about profit. Um, to have a valid scientific program, right? Um, so we need so many papers for that, and the rest get rejected, and the other other ones get accepted. Right? Um, that's more or less what we are going to do. We are going to wear multiple hats. So on the one hand, you're going to write a paper and you're going to submit it to, to you yourself, right? And then you sort of change hats and say, okay, let's look at the other costs. Let's look whether the other stuff is actually good or excellent or not so good or where it could be improved, right? And then basically you get comments back from your colleagues as well as from us. And then, well, what you do with those comments is up to you. You have the opportunity to improve. So, basically, that means um, there's a couple steps in between before we actually meet in July, August, whenever. There's a couple steps that will happen before that. The idea is these reports that you write as a draft version get circulated amongst you. Each of you will do, we need to try to figure out how to do that, probably three. Uh, each of you gets three drafts from your colleagues and you read them. You comment them and you provide feedback back to your colleagues. Right? Once you've received your own feedback for your own paper, you can look at that feedback and say, oh, they were all stupid. They didn't uh, recognize genius when they saw it. Um, or you take that into account and say, okay, let me, yeah, maybe valid criticism. Okay, I see the point. Um, and improve your draft, right? Which gives you a final version. And the final version is what you officially then submit to us. This is what we will look at. And well, then you give a presentation, okay? To help you with this process, to come up immediately now with a draft, if I tell you, give me a draft version of uh, a topic on, uh, what was one topic? Uh, network telemetry, who is, doing, who is doing network telemetry? You, excellent, good. So supposing um, I tell you, come, come back here, nice meeting you, come back with a draft, um, June 15th on network telemetry. Don't bother me before that. Sounds like a plan? Uh, excellent, good, he likes it. <laughs> Much less work for us and for me, wonderful. Um, maybe not. Huh? So maybe let's build some, do some, some intermediate milestones for that, right? And what has worked in the past is, what has worked nicely is, is to sort of work backwards, right? So at some point uh, when we have our meetings, we need a final set of your slides. Probably you're going to do slides for your talk, maybe not necessarily, but probably, right? So I want the final version of your slides that's basically the evening before the bus. A little before that, a couple of days before that, I want drafts of your slides. So we can look at those slides, maybe comment on the slides, maybe give some feedback. This is partially of that is self-preservation, self-protection. I have just one case. I remember one guy who gave, who gave a talk using slides with a pink background and red ink, red, red fonts. So red writing on a pink background. <laughs> I don't want to have that happening again, right? So we want to see your drafts. Um, again, you get comments, you can, uh, can, can, can ask. Same time, I want final version of your reports. Um, for the final versions, you need the reviews so a little bit earlier. You have to do the reviews for your colleagues. You need some time to do the reviews, so you need the draft versions, right? So we need to have the draft version before that. To help you with the drafts, we do two intermediate, two earlier milestones as well. Um, writing a draft from scratch maybe is not so easy. So we want to have a uh, table of content with a couple bullet points from you. No written text, no nothing worded in detail, just sort of structure. This is this is how I want my argument to flow, right? Um, that gets quick turnaround feedback from us uh, so, so you can work with it. And before that, before you even should start working on table of content, etc., we want a summary. We want a list, a short list, of the papers you have found in your literature search with one, two, three bullets per paper saying, okay, this is relevant because of, or I'm not going to look into this paper anymore because of, right? Experience shows typically people end up with 10, 15 papers for this, for this uh, review list, for this, for this literature list, 
And basically then we pick out three to five to be considered more in detail. That's an iterative process. There you have your advisor to talk to you um, and, and to help you with narrowing that down. Okay, so that, that, that's the plan here. Um, when would you like to do this block seminar? Two days in a row, we come here. My guess is it will be extremely difficult to find two days where everybody can attend while classes still run. So I think classes run until July 15, something like that, right? Hmm? July 12th. Four? July 12th. 12th, okay. Okay, that's uh, Friday then, right? So 13, 14, so July 15th is actually a Monday, right? Should we start with a working hypothesis? We probably need to do some fine tuning. I probably have some appointments July 15, 16. So maybe let's start with a working hypothesis of saying 15, 16, Wednesday, Thursday. I don't know. So July, that would be July 17, 17 18. So the, the actual seminar, July 17, 18. And I don't know, um, July 16, end of business. You don't see anything. And then let, let's calculate backwards from that, right? So, let me turn around here. July 16 is a Tuesday. Tuesday evening is actually nice. This is actually good. Uh, so this gives us reaction time, yeah. So how about we do one week before that, drafts of the slide. So that should be July 9th, right? July 9th. Working on the reviews is two weeks, so two weeks earlier is June. Anybody has a calendar? Two weeks before that. 25th. Reviews just needs about a week, I guess. I mean, you read a few papers, you need that, write some comments. Okay, that's one evening of work. Um, I guess one week is good enough for that. So we are at June 18th. And that's the long thing, right? Um, actually writing writing the report six weeks would leave us early May. Uh, no, that's a bit tight. So what's the second Tuesday in May? 14th? Let's, let's take seven. Let's see what, what this works out, June 7th. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's okay. Um, and two weeks earlier is April, April, April 23rd. And today is what? Today is the 11th. So that's roughly two weeks. It's a little less than two weeks. Yeah, I think that, that sounds plausible. That sounds plausible. Agreed? Now is your last chance to object. Because I'm, I'm extremely picky. I'm extremely picky once it comes to deadlines. Because it, it really breaks everything when some people come back and, oh, I'm sorry, this couldn't work out. And yeah, tough luck, right? Uh, not my problem. Um, people depend on you submitting your, their stuff so they can so you can do plan your own work depending on what other people do. So the typical rule we do, um, any any one second you go past the deadline for 24 hours, so any any 24 hour period gives you the downgrade of one third in the end, right? It's actually not so hard to plan, so just, just plan. Because it's just unfair towards your colleagues, it's unfair towards us, we also need to plan our work, uh, so we need your input at these particular points in time. Okay, 
sold. There's a little bit question mark here. I have some possibly in that week, possibly some conflicting appointments, but we could work. Okay. And let me point, let me, so there's no misunderstanding, right? I expect everybody to attend these two days, right? And I don't care whether you have a job or not and take, take two days off. This is part of your classes. This is an important part of such a seminar to attend, to participate, not just to sit there, to attend discussions and ask active participation there. Right. Okay, so where are we? Um, we have the milestones. Excellent. Good. What else? Um, basically, now we could say, okay, great, see you. Well, next meeting is actually there. All, all this can happen by email, right? Um, I, what, I, what I will do probably tomorrow, um, I'll get each of you, or I probably just posted on Powell, there's no secret there, um, individual advisors. I'm, I'm not dealing with all of you individually, right? So I'm outsourcing that to some of my PhD students. So each of you gets one PhD student or myself as your immediate contact points. So all of these are emails to your, to your advisor for this seminar, right? Send off the email before midnight on these particular days, all good, right? Um, now, you could just say, okay, see you, see you in July and send us emails before that. Um, I, no need to take a picture, I'll post that also. Um, um, but again, experience has shown that's probably not such a good idea. Um, if you do this the first time, maybe writing 10 pages of technical text is maybe a challenge as well. So what I usually offer, and I emphasize, this is an offer. Let's do two to three, maybe three meetings, 90 minute slots, um, where we talk about how does a conference work, how do you read papers, how do you do literature research, how do you write, and maybe later on towards July, maybe one additional meeting, how do you present? How do you do slides? How do you talk? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, right? If you don't want to attend there, you you call. Right? I I, I don't care. Uh, but uh, don't come back whining afterwards. Right? That's, that's your choice. So that was the other doodle, right? And that doodle has failed miserably. Um, the top voted option had nine votes out of eighteen, so that's really not good. So maybe we need to look have a look. Those are the times when I have classes or other appointments. So the, the, the dark ones are not feasible for me. If you want to attend such prepared preparatory meetings, um, then, then now is the time to come up with something. And I don't care. We can do Monday 8 o'clock. We can do Friday 7 o'clock in the evening. We can do Saturdays. I don't care. But we should come up with something that we most of us who want to attend can agree to. Okay, Monday, 8 o'clock. Let's do a roll call. That's maybe the easiest thing. Friday, what time? Friday, 6 o'clock. Evening or morning? Evening, okay. Friday, 6 to 8 is a bit late, a bit earlier, 5 to 7. No, not good? Okay. It's just three or four times, right? So it's manageable amounts. Friday, five to seven? That was easier than I thought. Okay. Excellent, good. So actually you can start tomorrow. We got this checked off. Good. Can we? Uh, probably. I need to check. Can we? Hold on. Where's my mouse? Now nah, we can't. I thought I thought I remember there's some meeting there. We could probably do six o'clock tomorrow. But over in Fürstenallee, and I don't know whether I get a room there. 
<laughs> and next Friday is a holiday, right? So that would leave us in two weeks. That's not so good. That's too late. You, you already have a deadline then. Okay. So tomorrow, six o'clock? Yeah, I'm not happy about it either. I have a full day of meetings before that. Do you think I am looking forward to doing a Friday evening? No. <laughs> See? But what can we do? I, I, I guess it will boil down to... It will, yep. It will boil down to that with... Six to eight tomorrow. And then if it doesn't work out, we'll see. Okay, good, excellent. I'll need to find a room. It will be, it will be over at Firstnale. I don't know where. Um, so watch what your power message is, and then we'll we'll see. Okay. Um, more or less one last thing. Um, in the seminars, a typical topic, a typical problem that comes up is plagiarism. Plagiarism means you take text from a paper and use it. You take a picture from a paper and use it. You take a table from a paper and use it. You can use it, but you have to make clear that this is a copy from somewhere else. You have to cite it properly. You have to give proper attribution, right? And then there's nothing wrong with saying, okay, I take figures such and such from this source and this is my figure five. That's okay. Um, However, if you do this with text to a noticeable degree, basically you can quote the paper you work on and you start with quotation marks at the first sign and you end with a quotation mark as the last of your 10 pages. Well, this is then not plagiarism, but you still fail, right? Because your own creative input was zero. Um, so there's, there's two sides of that particular coin. Um, don't copy without attributing it and do it sparingly. Um, even if you cite something, be careful what you cite and how you cite. The point here, the point of a seminar is for you to present technical content in your own words. And citing is not in your own words, so you don't learn anything, right? We'll talk about this some more. Um, you probably can look at some examples of what is borderline plagiarism, where there's eh, it's still jumping across the line, so we'll talk about that. Okay, but whenever there is clear plagiarism, please, there's zero tolerance. Um, if you start copying text from a paper into your own write-ups and we, we catch you doing that, I'm sorry, you fail. You immediately fail the seminar and that's the smallest of the possible consequences. I'm not sure if you ever read the concrete rule sets for that. This is part of your, <coughs> of your uh, examination regulations. It can lead to ex exmatriculation, expelled from the university. It can lead to, uh, to civil charges and fees up to, I think it was 20,000 euros. This has never happened and it will never happen. But in principle, uh, there, there's dire consequences there. Okay, I'm sure nobody of you wants to do that. No plans for that, just I need to say this. Okay, um, there's an additional description of these milestones. I think I mentioned everything. So the first thing we want, look at literature, look at the context of the paper that you have as a starting point, see what else is out there. And we'll talk about that tomorrow evening, how to do that, um, how to go through Google Scholar and these search engines, etc., etc. So you get an idea there. Um, Summarize that in an email sent to your advisor, all good. Right. So easy, easy peasy. Then table of content, again, what, however you do that, I don't care. Uh, just bullets in an email, a PDF file, whatever, that doesn't matter. Um, structure, structure of your text. I want to talk about this, chapter one is going to be this, bullet, bullet, bullet. And then chapter two is going to be this, chapter 2.1, subsection 2.1 is this, bullet, bullet. Why are we doing this? Well, we want to make sure that you make some progress. Don't push this, procrastinate all the work ahead of you. And we want to see whether this makes sense, whether you have the, whether you're on the right track, whether this is on a good path uh, towards success. And this is still early enough so we can say that, hey, look here, this is not a good idea. This is not going to give you a good structure. 
Why don't you reword? Why don't you reformulate? Why don't you reorganize your text? No. Without everything already in, um, um, without everything already being wordsmith, that, that's a lot for us to read. So this is sort of the intermediate thing. Um, oh, by the way, um, we are all going to do. We are doing all of that in LaTeX. Um, so no word files. You should, if if you nothing learn at this university in your whole master program, this is something that will last you your lifetime. This is the one useful thing for, for eternity. Wordfall doesn't even work with two versions at the same time, right? Um, okay. Then draft reports for review, redistribute reviews. I'm not going to read this out. I'll put this on, on, on Powell so you can have a look at that. Um, when, when you do these reviews, um, we formally, formally, we will anonymize them, right? So you don't really, you don't really know who wrote the reviews for your papers. I know that you can talk to your colleagues and find out. Yes, but that's up to you, right? If you want to find out, you can find out. If you don't want to, you don't have to find out. So we'll we'll try to make this as anonymous as possible. But be honest when you write these reviews. You are not going to do your buddies a favor by being nice. We are not going to take the reviews into account for grading in the sense that, oh, this was a bad review, so he gets a bad grade. We do look at the reviews from the perspective where they carefully done, where they thoroughly done, or some effort put into them, right? But whether you are nice or not nice matters not at all. Be honest, be clear, be constructive. Right? Be constructive, but also be honest. Don't say, oh, this is all great, right? And unless you hate your colleague, right? Then you, it's the best thing I've ever read when it's in effect terrible, right? Then <laughs> it's maybe not the right idea. Okay, final version. This is what we will use for grading. Um, slides, talks, this is what we will use for grading. Um, okay, but there's lots of time before we need to talk about that. Yeah, and the presentations. Grades are substantially influenced by your report, by your slides, and your presentation. Together, they make up easily 80, 85, maybe 90% of the grade. If, you, if it should turn out that at some point we are not so sure whether this is a 1.7 or a 2.0 or something like that, because based on these two main things, then we look at, well, participation in discussion, uh, whether reviews done nicely, etc., etc. They are not going to push you from a 2.0 to a 3.0 or to a 1.0. But they can sort of be the tiebreaker if you're sitting in between two grades, uh, two, two grade levels. Right. That's pretty much it, what I wanted to say. Any questions up to here? <coughs> Do the slides in LaTeX too? The slides in LaTeX is not necessary, but maybe a good idea as well. For the slides, I'm much more relaxed. Um, actually, if you want to do, what I encourage you to do is to experiment with something that you've never used. For example, there's one tool, it's mentioned here, uh, it's called Prezi. Heard about that? Prezi is cool. It's, a, it's an animation based presentation program. Where the idea is you, you basically put everything on one infinitely large slide as a vector format. And then as a presentation, you define a path through this infinite canvas. Where you can zoom in, zoom out, and move. Gives a very distinct style for, as a presentation. Can lead to motion sickness if, if people overdo it. You can also rotate, right? And then, so don't overdo it as usual with those things. But I've seen great presentations done with that. This can work really, really well. Um, not, don't, don't box yourself into everything is PowerPoint. No, not everything is PowerPoint. There, there's cool stuff out there. If you discover something else, go for it. Uh, experiment, try something out. This is definitely something I, I, I encourage you to do. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If you want to go all conventional and say, I'm not doing anything on a, on a computer screen, I'm doing whiteboard, I write everything on a whiteboard, go for it. Nothing wrong with that. Um, any, anything that you want to try out, whether you, to 
figure out whether this works for you, by all means. Okay? Any further questions? Is this more or less what you expected to happen? Totally, totally different. You think this is superfluous and we just hate you for making you participate in such a seminar? Well, maybe we do, maybe we don't. But um, at the end of the day, what do you think is going to decide your, your success in your career outside university? Who cares about school, right? Being able to talk. I mean, I'm, I'm maybe in a very talkative career path, right? But ev even in industry, people give presentations, write things down, give presentations, and give, by the way, give presentations, right? Meetings, meetings, meetings. If you are not able, it may, you may be able to do great technical work, but if you are not able to stand up in front of your colleagues, in front of a room, and in front of your boss, and in front of your boss's boss, and give a nice presentation, then you stay, well, sitting in front of a keyboard for, for your whole career, right? And that may be great or may not be great, but this is definitely an important skill. So think of this as one opportunity to practice. Actually, I think there's far too little opportunity to do that in a typical university program. So use it. Also, if you want to practice beforehand, um, I've seen this happening in some seminars that people amongst each other that you want to gang up and, and, and do a practice talk before the actual presentation. No problem. Let us know. You can use this room. There's other rooms available. Uh, organize that yourself. Let us know you need a room. No, no problem. Easy to do. Maybe helps control nerves. I don't know. Uh, up to you. Okay. Excellent. Then I guess we'll see each other tomorrow evening. Six o'clock, uh, room to be determined. Have a good evening.